Amen, Brother Curtis. Hey, that's, I'll say it again. We're blessed this morning to have this many people gathered together in one place that have like precious faith. That is a miracle. Because Jesus said there will be very few that finds this narrow path that leads to life. It won't be found in a melting pot of believers or unbelievers. It will be found where the message of the cross is what's being preached. For God says in his word that it is the power of God. How many of you Bible believers this morning? Well, that means you're ready for the Word. Hallelujah. Well, if you're going to the back for classes, now's the time to go for Children's Church. We've got great Children's Church teachers in the back. And uh, your children are allowed to stay out here, but they're not allowed to get up, move around, talk, or be any kind of distraction. Amen, Brother Curtis. Amen. No, he's not mean. He's just keeping a house of order where everybody can hear the Word. I've been in churches where kids and, and adults are even, man, just uh, talking and carrying on and just distracting, and, and that won't fly here. God's got something to say to us today, and we need to hear it. I hope that's why you came, amen. Well, go ahead and turn in your Bibles this morning to 1 John chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. My Lord, that was quick. You must be my Facebook friends. And let me say something about that. If you're not my Facebook friend, you can be my Facebook friend. And those of you that are have an opportunity when, if you're not here, when the message, like right now, for instance, it's on Facebook. It's live. All you have to do is touch the screen. If you're home and you're not feeling well, God forbid that ever happens, but it could. Uh, or if you're out of town on vacation or whatever, all you got to do is just touch the screen and there they are, worshiping the Lord right there in your church. And I thank God for all those that are my Facebook friends who follow us here at Crossway Church. They, they are the ones who the Lord has been able to bring back to the truth, back to faith and grace, back to the place where he's not having to knock to get back into fellowship. Amen. We're going to talk a few minutes this morning. We did a little intro Wednesday night of a message entitled, God is Greater. And what we'll be talking about today is God is greater than the condemnation that arises in our hearts sometimes. Anybody ever had to deal with any condemnation before as a Christian? The, we're, we're, we, we shouldn't have any condemnation. Condemnation is not God's will for our lives, but we know we experience condemnation only under the law. You don't experience condemnation under grace. And uh, we're going to learn some things this morning. Let me rephrase that. We're going to hear some things this morning. And then when you leave this place, if you allow the Lord to apply the truth to your life, then the learning begins. You do not learn sitting in the chair. You hear sitting in the chair, and then God encourages you to become a doer of what you heard. Because those who only hear, he says in his word, are deceiver, deceiving them their own selves. Those who hear the word and do the word... Are the blessed folk. Amen. So we don't learn in here. We hear in here. Then we leave and we trust the Lord. And we allow him to teach us as we go through experiences in our own lives. And then we learn. Amen. Now you didn't learn to ride a bicycle when somebody rode by on one. You watched them. You started learning when you got on it. And fell over. Amen. That's right. So we hear instruction and then we go and we allow the Lord to teach us. In the process we learn. And if we are learning, we're being conformed into his image. The bad attitudes are leaving. The, the foul mouth is leaving. The gossip and tongue that so long it could lick the pots in the kitchen from the bedroom is leaving. The desires of the world are leaving. I said the desires of the world are leaving. I'm being changed. I don't care if I'm 12 or I'm... 112, if my faith is right, I am being changed. I don't reach a place where I'm no longer being changed because I'm not like him yet and I won't be till I see him, but I am becoming more like him if my faith stays right. Amen. Are we too loud in here this morning? Are we good? All right. Are we too cold? Too hot? God forbid you're lukewarm. Gotcha. 
1 John chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You know, we're not ministering on this, but I want you to see this today. The only way that you can really love someone, anyone, according to God, is in truth. Amen. Everything else is just an affection, which is not necessarily love. What we need is an affection that is birthed out of love, and that love can only take place in truth. You're reading it in your Bible this morning. And hereby, everybody say, by this. By this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Did you see that? Because if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Now let me stop right there and mention what we talked a little bit about Wednesday night. If your heart is condemning you, then you need to remember, God is greater than your heart. Now, we've all experienced condemnation where we do something dumb, what I call a big piece of stupid. A better word is sin. When we commit a sin and we're so disappointed in ourselves and we should have conviction, we should have hurt, there should be something there of the Holy Spirit alarming us that that was wrong, that was sinful. And sin makes a Christian feel bad. If it doesn't, you got someone that only thinks they're a Christian, but they're not. A Christian hates sin. A Christian does not want to live in sin. A Christian has their heart broken because of sin. Amen. And so when we sin, I didn't say if, I said when we sin, and I'm not condoning sin because God says, shall we continue in sin? He forbids it. Because we've been made dead to sin. But when we do sin, I said, when we do sin, we shouldn't lay around for a whole day or a whole week condemning ourselves. Just, and I can't believe I did that. I'm so shocked. Uh, I just, and, and some people, some Christians, get so beat up over something they did that was obviously wrong, whether it was something little in their mind or something huge that now the whole community has seen. You can turn that air up a notch. Up. Let me say it again. If it's something that you and only you know about, or you and only your spouse, you and only your family, or if it's something that now has been blown out and now the whole community has seen some sin in your life, there's still no need to lay in the mully grubs over that. What we do is we trust God. We put our faith, make sure that our faith remains in what God did about our sin. What did he do? He gave his son to forgive us and to deliver us. Not just to forgive us, but to deliver us. You're not just forgiven, you've been forgiven and God wants to teach you how to live in deliverance. It's not the same thing. You've been forgiven... But some of us need delivering. There's always something there that's nagging, pulling, pushing. Something there that's trying to get us to, to leave this narrow path that we're on. Trying to make this narrow path not to be quite as narrow as it really is. It's called the flesh, the world, the devil. And Jesus at Calvary defeated the flesh, the world, and the devil. They're already defeated. And you're victorious in him, but he's trying to get us to learn how to live in victory without condemnation. Because when we sin, 
One of two things, one of really three things happen. We either acknowledge our sin, ask God to forgive us. We look to the cross where he's able to forgive us, where we find our forgiveness and strength to go on. Or if we're not doing that, that's why we're in the mully grubs over our sin. and we, we, we just like that pity party, that woe is me, that place that we're just beat up and we're down over a sinful act that we committed or thought that just won't quit or whatever that sinful thing may be we're, we're just in the mully grubs now and we're condemning ourselves or the third thing the third option is we excuse our sin we excuse it we make excuses for our sin or we allow sin to just to condemn us. We condemn ourselves. Uh, we, we excuse or accuse ourselves. We excuse or accuse others based on how it will benefit us if we're under law. If we're under law. Under law, we excuse sin or we accuse of sin. Are you with me? Now, why don't we just, can we turn to Romans 2 this morning before we go back to 1 John? Man, this is going to be something that we all need to hear and we all need to understand today. I'm going to encourage you to go back, and I hadn't even preached it yet, but to go back and listen to this message again. I can assure you that the Lord is going to be able to say towards you, to you, more than you're going to get in this little 45 minutes. He's going to say some things that you're going to need to go back and get all of it. And if you need to go back again and get all of it, sign up for a CD. You're going to need to know what he's trying to tell you today. If you're going to walk in victory where sin not only won't dominate you, but won't condemn you. And you won't condemn yourself and you won't condemn others. You won't excuse sin in your life and you won't make excuses for sin and you won't make excuses in other people's lives. You'll always give the truth to them that delivers and you'll remind yourself of the truth that delivers you. Amen. How many of you remember a message about four, at least four years ago that I preached? It's, it's on YouTube and it was called Drop the Rocks. One of the most awesome messages ever preached at Crossway Church by me was Drop the Rocks. You can go listen to it. It's on YouTube, on my YouTube page, Curtis Hutchinson 316. You can find it. I kind of like 316. Y'all know what that means, right? John 316. And it was a message about when Jesus had this woman who was caught in the very act of adultery brought before him and they had stones in their hand ready to stone this woman and Jesus said let the one who is without sin cast the first stone well they dropped the rocks and had to go to the house because they realized my Lord we're all sinners and the, 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 the main point of that message was this the only way you can throw rocks of condemnation at other people is if you yourself are in condemnation. The only people throwing rocks at each other are under the law where there ain't nothing but some rock chunking going on. They're all under law. Now they've been saved and put under grace, but you don't have to stay under grace. You can migrate back to the law if you put your faith in anything other than the cross. Amen. So you need to go back and watch that message too. Matter of fact, there's about 900 messages since 2005 <laughs> that point you to Calvary and the victory of Calvary. Every one of them. The only time, the only, listen, next time you start throwing rocks at somebody or somebody's throwing rocks, and I'm talking about of condemnation at you, you need to realize that's only happening under the law. Amen. Romans 2.14. Romans 2.14, it's going to be on the big movie theater here. For when the Gentiles, everybody say, that's me, which have not the law, the Jews had the law, we didn't. 
do by nature, we do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, everybody say, that's me. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, verse 15 please, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Did you see that? We Gentiles weren't Jews. We weren't born in the nation of Israel, Abraham's flesh. We're Gentiles outside the commonwealth of Israel. But Jesus came for everybody, thank God. And we wasn't born knowing the Ten Commandments. We wasn't born raised up in all the Jewish knowledge and the Jewish laws and their ceremonies. But Gentiles have the law, the work. Look at this. We show the work of the law. Look at that. We show the work of the law. What's the, what's the work of the law? Condemnation and death. The ministry of law was a ministry of condemnation and death. <clears throat> which show the work of the law written in our hearts, our conscience also bearing witness, and our thoughts the meanwhile, here's what happens under the law, ex accusing or excusing one another. Accusing or excusing one another. That's what happens under the law. I, if you if you got sin in your life, I'll excuse that if I can benefit from it. Or I'll accuse you if it's harming what I wanted to benefit. That's all under the law. I'll excuse sin, make an excuse for it if I'm thinking I'm going to benefit from it. Or I'll condemn myself if I know it's just killing me. It's called deceitful lusts. Deceitful lusts. I'm trying to get you to see this first thing this morning, that it's only under the law. The only thing that takes place under the law is rock chunking, condemnation. That's all that's under the law. That's why Jesus, born of a woman in the fullness of times, came to deliver those. And the Bible says he was born under the law himself. But he came to deliver those that were under the law, bound in condemnation and guilt, playing the big Adam game and Eve game, the blame game. And to get us out from under the law and put us under grace. Where we now don't trust in what we do or what they did or what we didn't do and what they didn't do. But what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Period. That's it. When they're being ugly to you or when you're thinking about being ugly to them. Just run your thoughts back to the captive play, the captivity of Christ and his obedience unto death. And watch what the Holy Ghost will do for you. He won't do it based on any other thing. He won't work in your life based on any other thing than your faith in the truth. The truth is Christ and Him crucified. No, brother, the whole Bible's the truth. But Jesus said, I'm the truth. And He said, the Word of God is concerning me. And if you're taking notes, it's Hebrews 40 and 7. Sorry, Hebrews 10 and 7, Psalms 40. And seven, Luke five, no, Luke, what is it? 24, 44 through 46, and John 5, 39 is the best one. In you search in the scriptures, for in them you say you have life, but they are they which testify of me. Jesus is our Genesis. He is our revelation. He is the first word and the last word and everything in between. If you really mean it's all about Jesus, then you better acknowledge the written word of God is about Jesus. We say that there's a scarlet thread that runs through Genesis all the way to Revelation. Why ain't we preaching that scarlet thread? Hallelujah. Why aren't we preaching the message? of the cross mm. because we're under law and until we begin to preach the gospel the message of the cross it's because we're under law and all we can do is produce the word of God and it's lawful bondage 
place instead of the bread of life that we can eat. And when we preach the word of God in the context of Jesus Christ and him crucified, then the law of liberty, the word of God becomes the word that changes me, sets me free, makes me free, puts me on the right path. Hallelujah. Outside of that context, I'm just hearing somebody read the Bible to me that's not going to get me out of this slow sinking boat I'm in full of condemnation. The only thing that will plug that boat that's sinking that you're in full of condemnation is the truth of Christ and Him crucified. Otherwise, it'll keep sinking and you're going to sink with it. Mm, Look at that. We Gentiles show the work of the law written in our hearts. Let's stop here for a minute this morning. God says through the prophet Ezekiel, That he's going to, in that day, talking about this day, for us, and a coming soon day to the nation of Israel, give us a new heart where he's going to write his laws in our hearts. When you, listen, when you were dead in your sins, the law was written in your heart then. But it was a heart that was separated from God, a, a, law that, a heart that was condemned, a heart that was under the law, a, a heart that was guilty. We were born that way. But when you got a new heart, the law that God ri- wrote on that new heart is a heart that's been set free by the blood of Jesus. There's different from that heart and the heart we have now. Glory to God. I got a new heart that God also wrote his law, but it's the law of liberty, not the law that condemns and holds me in captivity, but the law that frees the sinner and keeps the saint living in victory. Man, I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning. Law's been written in our hearts all along. We need to know the difference. From the letter of the law and this life-giving spirit that came to give us freedom from the law and offer grace, which means he offers what God the Father is going to do through him on the cross. Man, I love grace. What am I saying? I love God working in my life. I love God being able to do more than to, 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 to desire to do and to, and to will to do. I love to watch the fruit of God at work in my life. It's pretty powerful right here. Here we have in the Word of God telling us that the work of the law was written in our hearts. It was the work of the law was written in our hearts. What does that mean? The, the bottom of it tells us what was written. That we're always excusing or accusing. That's what's written. That's what we're born with written in our hearts. Guilty. You're just condemning yourself and others or you're excusing yourself and others. See, those who are walking in this truth, those who've been given a new heart, now God has written his laws in our hearts The law of liberty, the law that liberates the word of God in the context of the one who who came to liberate us, Jesus. See, that's why it's so important that the written word of God must be at all times in the context of the living word of God and what he did to bring that life to us. He died. It's not his resurrection that saved you. It's his death. It's not his resurrection that defeated the devil. It was his death. That's why God the Holy Ghost didn't tell Paul to tell the church at Corinth that the preaching of the resurrection is the power of God, but that the preaching of the cross is the power of God to those who are saved. Now I hope you got that. Just a little bit. When we start condemning others or ourselves, when we start excusing sin in others or ourselves, that only takes place under law. Under grace, we are forgiven and we find the power to walk out of sin. Under grace, we don't condemn others. We just tell them the truth. 
Jesus said he didn't come to condemn but to save that which is lost. And we are his body and he's still in the business of saving but not condemning. I said we are his body and he's still in the business of saving and not condemning. And when we get into the business of condemning, then we are under law. And the Bible has a lot to say about law. The law works wrath. The law is not of faith. The law strengthens sin. It's a place that you don't want to be because Jesus came and went through a horrendous death to get you out from under the law and to put you under grace, which means under what God did for you at Calvary and what he'll do in your life today because of your faith in that. I've already said enough. I've already said enough. You got to recognize law is more than you putting your faith in something other than the cross. That that is how it works, and it works that way every time. If you put your, if somebody comes along that just loves you, and you love them, and y'all have had a relationship all your life, and you let them speak something into your life, like, well, you really can't be fully saved until you're water baptized. You fully can't be saved unless you. Speak in tongues. You fully can't be saved unless you do this, this, and this. I don't care how much they mean to you. The devil uses those people to try to get you back under the law. Water baptism is a good thing. It is a sign of what God has already, somebody say already, already done in your life through your faith in what his son did at Calvary. You just show the proof of that when you're water baptized. Water ain't never saved a soul, but the blood of Jesus has saved every person who's ever believed in it. Got whole denominations out there in America, millions of people that are preaching and teaching that if you're not water baptized, you're not going to heaven. That is law, my friend. What is law? Law is anything you think you have to do to get to heaven. You can't do anything to get to heaven. And if you believe in people like that, walking in that place, you need to hear me, you're in condemnation. The only place that removes all condemnation is the cross. It's gone. There is no condemnation. Oh! There is. Therefore, now. Romans 8 1. Have you already got it up there? <laughs> I'm looking at her back here. She's like, I got it. I know where you're at. I want to look at it this morning. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, comma, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. That right there alone tells us that the cross and my faith in the cross put my feet in a new walk, a walk after the Spirit. And that word after means according to. According to. That's all it means. Look it up when you get home. It ain't a deep theological week-long study. Walking after the Spirit means according to the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Who's in Christ? Those that have been baptized into his, Romans 6, 3, death through faith in what he did for their sins, for the, for the condemnation that the law had us buried up in. I hear chains falling this morning. I hear chains falling this morning. You don't have to condemn anybody. You don't have to condemn yourself. Jesus came to remove you from all condemnation, whether it's incoming or it's outgoing. And let me just say this, the only way it can go out is if you're under it again. The only way condemnation goes out is if I'm not walking according to the Spirit. Look at, look at this one verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but according to the Spirit. That tells me that what Jesus did at Calvary, he came to remove, can, can we put Galatians 4, 4 up there? We just had a little Bible study this morning. 
But you, you know what? If you don't have a good Bible study, you're going to change. It's going to choke the life out of you. Amen. Why do you think them folks sitting in them rooms this morning, Jesus knocking, trying to get back in their hearts. He's trying to get back in fellowship with them. What are they lacking? The truth of God's Word. They've made up new things. They've got new carts. They've, they've made up new way. Well, this is what we believe. You ever talk to those people, show them something in the Bible right there in black and white, and they say, well, uh, that ain't what we believe. I'm so thankful that the only we I'm in is the we with Apostle Paul. I'm in the we. When Paul wrote we, I'm in that we. I ain't in them we's. I'm trying to be nice, and you know it. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman made under the law. Next verse, please. To do what? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. God adopted us into a family by grace, not law. Not to operate any longer under law. Because under law, there's condemnation. Condemnation brings fear. And this perfect love that God supplied us through His Son on the cross removes all fear. He came, Jesus came that we might receive the adoptions of, adoption of sons to... And it's by the way of redemption from under the law. Under the law is only condemnation. What's the fruit of it? Excusing sin or condemning sin. Amen. God judged sin on the cross in His Son Jesus Christ. It's where your sin was judged. People all the time saying, God's going to judge America. God judged all sin at Calvary. And it's not that sin does not come and have a great negative effect on people's lives because whichever way we choose to go, if we choose to walk after the Spirit, which we've proved from the Word this morning already and will more in just a few minutes, if we choose to walk, keep our faith in the cross and walk after the Spirit, then we're going to have the fruit of the Spirit. If we didn't choose to go any other way than that, the Bible calls it flesh that's only found under law. And corruption as its fruit. Corruption. What's not of God? Corruption. Life is of God. Powerful. Let me just stop right here this morning. Be quiet just for a minute. Hallelujah! I hope you're getting some of this this morning. It's more than a children's Bible story. God sent his son to deliver you from the mess you were in. Oh, you might say, well, I wasn't like you, Brother Curtis. I wasn't out there strung out on this and drunk all, all them years on that and doing all these things you said you've done. No, but you were guilty of what made me do all that. You were guilty of sin because you were born under the law. Guilty, stamped, done, over, guilty, no hope. But God sent his son that while we were yet without hope and strength, he loved us that much. He said, I'm going to get them. I didn't create them to be under law. And I'm sending you to go get my people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! And Jesus came and got me. Hallelujah. He said, you don't need to be under law. I've supplied more grace that, than you will ever need. Hmm. Feel I'm getting cranked up. <laughs> Every time we <laughs> praise and worship, I look over at Andrew and say, You getting ready to run, son? You got something to run about. You got something to shout about. Oh, it ain't church. Oh, it ain't church. It's Jesus. Uh, when you keep looking at Jesus and what he came to do for you, oh, it wasn't a tiptoe through the tulips. Uh, he was fully man and went through a horrendous suffering more than we'll all go through together. And he was fully God, though. 
And he came to save that which couldn't save itself. And he wants to provide something today for us that are saved that we still can't provide for ourselves. It's called life and victory. Hallelujah. But you can't experience it under the law. It's only under grace. And grace is God at work. And he only works in the truth. Psalms 33, 4 tells us that. For the word of the Lord is right in all his works. Everybody say all his works. All his works are done in truth. And the truth is Christ the man and what he did at Calvary. And we know that because Jesus said when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And it's what about Jesus that makes you free. He died. The truth is a man and his work, who he is and what he did. Without what he did, you ain't getting no part of who he is. Without what he did, your faith in who he is and what he did, you ain't getting no part of who he is. See, it's through the cross. And hear me this morning, it's only through the cross that he loves you. That you can love Him. That you can be saved and live for Him. That you can experience victory under grace. Most of the church don't have a clue what grace is. They just say, oh, that's what I was saved by. I heard a guy on the radio the other day, a young preacher, talking about the difference between Cain and Abel is that Abel tapped into the grace of God, but he didn't say anything about the sacrifice. And if we don't talk about the sacrifice, we can't have grace. We can read in the Bible for 50, 60 years and wonder how can God multiply grace and peace in my life. I don't see it ain't happen for me. It's because you're not listening to somebody telling you the truth over and over and over again. And if you think you're sick of hearing the message of the cross, you've yet to hear it. Oh, I need more than the cross. Oh, I, what do you need? Any time anybody makes that comment that they need more than the cross, they're actually, the next statement they give you will spell L-A-W. Law. Because if it ain't the cross alone, it's L-A-W. And underneath that is condemnation and death. No, it ain't gold dust. It's a cobweb or a hair or something. <laughs> See, that's a good opportunity for them nuts out there. They get a loose hair or something falls from the ceiling. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You come out of some them fruity places. Not of God. Amen. Preaching gold dust instead of the blood of Jesus. Or preaching gold dust because of the blood of Jesus. Both are wrong. Amen. He didn't die to give you gold dust. He died to give you a new heart. Yeah. I've already preached enough. People need to get it. He didn't come to die for you just so you could live better. He came to die to totally remove you through death. The only way to get out of law is through death. You can't just wake up today and say, Boy, man, I'm glad I went to church. I'm glad I heard that. I, man, I, I'm just going to make my mind. I ain't being under law. No, you're not. Faith in the death of Jesus initially removes you from law, daily keeps you from going back under it. And the Bible in Hebrew, Hebrews 12 tells us that we're to guard our heart diligently lest we fail of the grace of God, that we move away from God at work. Because if we move away, if we fail of the grace, that means law is functioning again. I don't need condemnation in my life, and I don't have to have it. And when it pops up, I know now because of what I've learned from God through the Scriptures, I can recognize when I'm looking at law again. Do you know that while we were under the law, we were married to the law? 
But through your death, Romans 7 teaches that, man, what in the world? <laughs> through, your, <laughs> through your death in Christ, through, only through your death in Christ has there been a divorce from the law. There's been a divorce from the law. Now you're married, Romans 7 teaches us, to the one that was raised from the dead, the one that died for our sins. You're married to him now, Jesus. He is our husbandman. And when we go back and tamper with that ex-spouse, it doesn't please our new husband. When we go back and tamper with that law, when, when we're so lazy or foolish or complacent or slothful that we won't want to know the truth so I can be on guard, so I can glorify my Father for giving me His Son to liberate me from the place of law and condemnation and death. If I'm lazy and I just say, well, God's going to do what God does and it ain't going to have nothing to do with me and I don't really, if God wants me to know something, He'll just show up and teach me. That's why you're here. He brought you here. He's got you watching. Watch it online. It's not no case of rah, rah. It ain't no slot machine. You'll either seek him or you won't find him. Amen. He says, those that seek me early will find me. That ain't talking about 4 o'clock in the morning. You know when early is? If everything's starting right now, when's early? Right now. It ain't no earlier than it is right now. We said, hey, right now. I know I can't talk, but I ain't worried about it. You're all from where I'm from, and you all understand me. Some of y'all got it worse than me. But we interpret for each other. I go preach in these other places, and people just sit out there and smile. I'm like, what's wrong with them? <laughs> and after church, it's like, man, where are you from? kind of a crossbreed between a Cajun and what? <laughs> but I tell you what, God ain't looking at how I talk. There's been people that visited Crossway Church and, and left and sent word back and didn't send it, but it got back. I can't listen to him. He's too country. I got news for you. Somebody's listening. Somebody's listening. Beyond a little old country preach, somebody's hearing the Lord. Somebody is hearing the word of the Lord. Somebody's hearing the shepherd this morning that'll lead them right out of the law and into grace. Somebody is hearing Jesus this morning that's learning how to recognize when something's trying to bring me back under the law, which is my flesh. Can't blame it on the devil. Oh, he loves it, but he's defeated. So is your flesh. So is the world. Mm. There is therefore now no condemnation. Let's get back to 1 John. Let me get back over. Y'all been held me up long enough. I say that all the time because hungry hearts. Can I tell you this morning that the gift of God, and I mean the preaching, teaching gift, what comes out is going to be based on the people that are there. Most of the time, most of the time, the hearts that are there to learn. If God finds hungry hearts, he's going to fill them with the truth. He's going to fill them with the truth. First John 3, <clears throat> verse 19, And hereby we know that we are of the truth. We are of the truth. And shall assure our hearts before him. I need that every day. My heart to be assured before him. Condemnation hurts that. Condemnation takes my confidence away. Condemnation removes my assurance. God brought me. And I'd never really thought about this before. But God allowed me to get to the place. Where I had to realize when you know the story I always tell about being in that warehouse and having my Bible standing there and not being sure of anything anymore except one thing, and that was that God loved me. I wasn't sure about the baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore. I wasn't sure about tongues anymore, although I'd already received and was operating in. But I'm telling you, under law, everything comes under attack. And that's all we were in back in them days. Wasn't no grace, it was all law because there was no message of the cross. 
There was no pointing to Calvary. There was a point, a pointing to you need to do these things right here and whoa, boy, God will pour out on you. That's a lie. Law. And law brings you to a place where your assurance is just dwindled down. But I'm so thankful today that although I was not sure of anything else, I still hung on to the love of God. I don't know anything, but I know you love me. And I believe that through that faith, just in that simple thing, that he began to let me hear the truth through Sun Life Radio. I said he began to let me hear it. As I found myself in a low and hurting and broken place that condemnation brings every human. See, that's what the law does. It brings you to a broken place. You, you're defeated. You don't have no victory because there is none under law. And you hear how guilty and without hope you are. And then you hear the message of the Son of God that came to give His life for you because God loves you that much. And you believe that. And that simple faith in that work of Jesus removes you from that place of not being sure anymore to a place now where there's a strong confidence. And as I begin to listen to Brother Swaggart and Sister Francis on, on the, the, the message of the cross and, and Francis and friends and begin to, God, teach me his word in the truth. I said, teach me his word in the truth. I said, teach me his word in the truth. Then I saw myself coming back uh, one day at a time, a stronger assurance. Till it got to the point, God began to remind me, you're still called. And that assurance brought with it. I believe that. I believe that. See, with the assur- the ministers you may be watching today, preachers out there, and you've lost your assurance, come back to Calvary. Come back to the cross. God will pour out on you when I got a hold of this, or rather when he got a hold of me. Then I saw, man, ministry wasn't a burden. Ministry wasn't too far out of reach. Ministry brought with it an excitement now because the excitement, the joy, and the strength, and the hope are in Christ who died for me to be able to have everything that I have. It ain't about what you do. It's about what he did on the cross for you and through your faith and that alone, what he'll do in and through you today. I'm thankful this morning that I can wake up today and know that my God, your God, the God of the Bible, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, is not going to base what he'll do for me today and tomorrow on anything I've done in my past. He is only, and it's across the board. Nobody's different. It's a clean slate for everybody. Whoever puts their faith in the death of Jesus Christ, the shed blood for their sins, whether it's the first time or the 490,000th time, he's always going to show up and wipe the slate clean and give you a brand new day because his mercies are brand new every morning. Hallelujah. I said today is the first day, and it's a blessed day of the rest of your life if your faith is in Christ. Woohoo! Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I love Jesus. Woo! He did it all. I didn't have to do anything but simply as a child say, I believe it. Some people say, Why are you believing that? Because I need it. I need, I'm tired of not being sure where I came from, why I'm here, where I'm going. The world's full of those people, but I'm not one of them anymore. I know where I come from. I know the one who came for me. I know what's happening today, and I know where I'm going tomorrow. I'm not unsure about anything. Oh, so you know all about everything. I don't know much about anything, but I'm not unsure about my Savior, Jesus. And that he holds all my answers. And when he gets ready to give each one of them to me daily, he'll just give me another one. He'll just teach me something else. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. But thank God, here a little, 
and there a little. Thank God, here a little and there a little. It ain't about a routine, perpetually life of going to church. It's about taking up my cross daily and following the one that gave his life on it. Hallelujah. So I don't have to go back. When I sing that song, I don't want to go back to my old life. I'm going to start singing, I don't want to go back to the law that held me in bondage and kept me dead in sin. I'm going to hang on to grace. I'm not going to fail of the grace of God. I know I ain't got to do anything but believe in the one that gave his life for me. Simple. And when folk come along, a black man told me about five years ago, I was telling him the simplicity of this gospel. And all you got to do is believe it. He looked up at me at work and said, there's got to be more to it than that. And remember again, when you hear that, it's the manifestation of being under law. Because they're saying, it's got to be something I've got to do. And everybody this morning across the world who's teaching that you have to do anything for initial victory or daily victory, they're liars and thieves, and they're robbing from God, and they're robbing from the people of God. Because anybody that thinks they have to do anything to get in the kingdom or do anything to function in the kingdom all in of themselves, then they have this mentality, whether they know it or not, God owes me something. He owes no man anything. We owe him everything. Everything. Every minute of every day. Not Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Every minute of every day, you're his. You don't have to function in condemnation. The gossip in tongue is only under the law. And you know, we go back and forth all the time. Can I get a witness? We tiptoe around a little bit under the law, and then God wakes us up, and we say, God, forgive me. We were operating under law for years as Christians. But God showed up and opened your eyes to the sacrifice. You saw the sacrifice. You, saw, you begin to see the Scriptures in the light of of the one who claimed to be the light and what he did to become your light. Outside of that, there's only condemnation. And let me say something in closing that I said when I began this morning. I'm thankful that I'm not in a melting pot. I'm thankful that I pastor a people and that I work alongside people that we are of like precious faith. Brother Bo tells this story. Him and Brother David work together. And there's a young man that works with them and they're trying to get the, let the Lord use them to get the knowledge of the truth to, to him. And I'll never forget, Bo's told me the story two or three times, and, and David's told me probably two or three times, and, and I'm glad they keep telling me because I, I, I need to hear things like this. Because it's a testimony. The young man looked at one of them, Bo or David, I don't remember, Bo, and said, Everybody go to church, y'all talk like that? And he meant saying the same thing. The Bible says for us, the children of God, who've been delivered from law and placed under grace, speak the same thing. Speak the same thing. And it's out of the abundance of the heart that we speak. Let our hearts be filled with the love of God, which is from faith in a sacrifice of His Son. And then our hearts can continue until the rapture or until He comes for us individually. But we won't let nothing separate us from the Lord or each other. Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you this morning for the songs, the music, the praise, the worship that you inhabited this morning. That you literally visit your people. That you allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth. That you are looking even to this day still for true worshipers that would worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, I thank you for the word of the Lord that came forth this morning as a two-edged sword to chop away every lie and deception of the enemy.